Hello, good morning. My name is Jamal Khan. I'm the head of tax at Churchill Tax Advisors, and we are presenting our weekly tax update. Um, we will go through some recent tax cases, but before that, some recent developments uh, that we have come across. The HMRC have been targeting or running a campaign um, against uh, landlords who have not declared uh, rental income correctly. HMRC have now got a very strong database called Connect uh, and they also receive information from local boroughs where landlords have been renting out properties and they compare that with individuals who have been whether either filing or declaring the rental income or not. Uh, we have seen in the last couple of years, <coughs> even in the last few weeks, uh, uh, landlords receiving letters, notices from HMRC, um, and uh, uh, with, with and stating that you haven't uh, been declaring. We, we have information that you have not been declaring the full rental income um, based on their records. Uh, so the landlords are then given a choice of whether to make a declaration or not to make a declaration. And usually when the, ch the clients come to us, we use uh, something called a let property campaign that allows us to declare rental income going back to, say, 20 years. And uh, this also allows us to keep the penalties to a minimum and uh, without having to refile tax returns or file tax returns for 20 years where the penalties could be significantly higher. Uh, we have seen cases where uh, other accountants and advisors have advised clients to ref or file tax returns for 20 years. When they do that, the penalties for late filing far outweigh the actual tax liability for the rental income. But if we follow the rental income, uh, the let property campaign route, it's a lot, it's a lot quicker. Um, the next point that I wanted to talk about was uh, trusts. Um, a lot of uh, people are familiar with trusts and trusts were used uh, for uh, tax planning. Uh, however, in, in, in my view, since 2006, when the trust taxation was reformed, um, now the trusts are very less attractive, in fact, prohibitive um, for tax planning, especially for large estates, because uh, when, a dis when most tr trusts are taxed as discretionary trusts, so when, a, 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 say, somebody has a property uh, portfolio worth 10 million pounds or 5 million pounds, if they, those are transferred into a trust, um, they can, that can raise an immediate tax charge, um, inheritance tax charge. Uh, although the capital gains tax can be delayed, but the tax charge or the lifetime transfer tax of 20% still applies. Um, the tax, uh, tax, uh, trust tax rate, income tax rate is 45%. Uh, there's a 10-year charge. So for those reasons, we, we are, get, uh, at, at this moment in time, we're, we're spending, we're seeing more clients who come to us who want to uh, dissolve a trust and get their properties out of the trust because the, the admin burden and the cash flow, pro, uh, cash flow problem due to high taxation can be very damaging. <coughs> the next uh, point, we now move on to some of the cases for, for, for that have been announced in the last week or so. Very interesting cases. Um, in the case of Cusins versus HMRC, um, the, this was an appeal that was uh, filed by the appellant. HMRC had raised assessments, uh, discovery assessments or assessments based on uh, the information they felt they had. In fact, the taxpayer, Mr. Cusins, was, was, wasn't very cooperative during the tax investigation that had been going on and HMRC said, well, if you're not going to provide information to us, we will assume that you made a 50% margin on the sale of scrap cars or second-hand cars. And they assessed him with significant amounts. Mr. Cusins appealed to the tribunal. He said, well, these assessments they've raised are completely ridiculous. Uh, they are baseless. Uh, the tribunal uh, looked at the circumstances and they said, well, yes, if they were to raise assessments, they asked HMRC, do you have any basis for your calculations? And HMRC didn't have any basis for calculations, but they stated that this was best judgment. Best judgment is something that HMRC use often in cases where they're under, under declared sales. Uh, but in this case, uh, although they had stated this was best judgment, they were not able to satisfy the tribunal judge that um, uh, the, these the, 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 how they had arrived at their figures. The tribunal judge asked, would it be no practical to make 50% profit? 
uh, on scrap cars and they couldn't uh, justify that and therefore the whole assessment uh, and the penalties and everything was cancelled which is quite a good result for Mr Kewson's I mean although he was completely not cooperative he, he had he had given HMRC officers a very bad very difficult time during the case uh, but ultimately he got the results it's an un unusual case but uh, something to, to, to watch out for if HMRC are being unreasonable in raising their assessments they need to uh, that can be challenged um, the next case is that of uh, Nauruzi. Nauruzi versus HMRC. This is a very, very interesting case from my perspective. Um, now, in this one, um, in, in fact, something similar we've taken to the tribunal as well recently. Um, um, Mr. Nauruzi uh, had received capital gains tax assessments against which he appealed. He appointed a tax advisor, an agent, an accountant who was supposed to be in representing him and writing to HMRC, um, so he relied on his agent. Now, um, uh, time went on, he, the agent stopped respond, corresponding with HMRC, but kept on telling Mr. Nauruzi, no, don't worry, this, is, this will be taken care of, you don't have to worry about anything. He missed the deadlines, the matter went to the tribunal, he did, uh, and his, 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 his case was struck out of it because there was no representation. But Mr. Nauruzi didn't know about this. Now, wh what's important here is uh, 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 Mr. Nauruzi found out some two years later that his, ca his case had been struck out and he had to pay. So he filed a late appeal uh, with the tribunal. They only have 30 days to appeal, but he filed an appeal after two years. Uh, the inspectors uh, objected to this, the HMRC objected to this late appeal, it went to the tribunal. The tribunal judge considered that, yes, it was it was late appeal, it was very late, but Mr. Nauruzi was genuinely under the belief that his, he, he, uh, his case was being taken on and, and uh, all the deadlines were being met by his representatives, which they didn't. And it would be very unfair for HMRC to take on, uh, take the tax uh, if, if, and it would be a miscarriage of justice effectively if he wasn't given a chance to represent his case uh, and therefore the, the, the appeal was allowed and this yes yet to be seen how the ultimate the, the, what the final assessments are uh, but I'm sure that it will be significantly lower than uh, what HMRC have assessed him and the next case is that of uh, Home E Sub Limited. Uh, effectively, this is a Subway franchise operating five stores. HMRC uh, did invigilation visits uh, and checked whether the correct amount of VAT was being charged. Um, HMRC raised assessments based on, based on cold, hot food or whether the food was being eaten, eaten in or taken, the subway, the, the sandwiches were being eaten in or taken away because that changes the VAT assessment or the VAT charge. Uh, HMRC's assessments uh, were quite high. The, 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 the taxpayer appealed to the tribunal and uh, although H the HMRC didn't have enough information but they still raised assessments based on best judgment which we've discussed before. So the, the taxpayer's uh, contention was that these uh, best judgment assessments are very wrong and uh, when they were tested in the tribunal the HMRC's assessments could not, they could not justify the basis or could not justify how they have arrived at these figures. Uh, so once again, HMRC lost this case of best judgment, which they have used many, many times before, even in the cases that we've, we've seen. But on these cases, rather than going to the tribunal at Churchill Tax Advisors, we, we, we settled these cases through alternate dispute resolution, which is less costly for the client and it's a lot easier for, it's better for both parties to reach a resolution. Uh, we have very rarely come across cases on best judgment where we would take them to the tribunal. Um, but uh, I mean, as I said, yeah, this, this, this case was taken and it was won. So it is quite a good, quite a good news and something that, that can be used by other taxpayers during tax investigations uh, when, when HMRC have raised best judgment. Um, if you like our uh, YouTube videos, please like them on, uh, YouTube, on, on the channel. You can subscribe to our channel as well. Thank you.